Hey, Steve here from photomasteryclub.com and in this video I'm going to show you a, uh, a few techniques to uh, combine selections and save them into like a reusable format so that you can create a mask that you can reuse over and over again in your, uh, in your workflow on a particular image. So, for example, uh, how that can help you, um, just as within this image here, uh, what I wanted to do when I was processing this image is basically process these trees in the foreground separately to everything that's happening in the background because when I took the shot there was uh, you know there's quite a lot of contrast and these trees were very much silhouetted against that bright sun in the distance so I wanted to create a mask uh, that would help me isolate those trees uh, but I didn't want to have to do it every time it came to uh, making an adjustment. So I'm going to show you a quick version of, uh, you know, of how I created and then combined those selections into one mask. So here goes. Now the tool I'm going to use for this demonstration is just a quick selection tool. Now depending on the images that you uh, use this on, this may or may not be the best tool. Um, and you may or may not want to do things a little bit more accurately than what I'm going to show you just for the demonstration. But uh, you know you can use whatever selection method is uh, the most appropriate uh, for your particular image. But yeah, so <laughs> with that said, the uh, yeah let's just start making a selection around this first tree. So this is quite basic. All I'm going to do is just start creating that selection around the tree trunk here and due to the uh, settings on the uh, brush itself I'm going to need to just refine that a little bit so you can see it's selected over here so that's not ideal so I'm just going to hold alt or option on the keyboard and then run this down the outside of the tree trunk and then around the foreground here and then just where it's taken away a little bit too much I'm just going to go back and add it in so without anything uh, held in on the keyboard this time that will add to the selection and then with alt or option held in that will remove from the selection now you could and it is advisable to actually go into the uh, select and mask um, options to really make that edge as accurate as possible I won't do that now because that's uh, yeah not really what I want to show you at the moment um, but you know just know that what you're doing here is trying to create as accurate a selection as possible around the trees. So with that done, uh, that will do for now. I could make it a little bit more accurate if I wanted to, but uh, like I said, I want to make this video quick. So with that selection made, what I can do to save that now so that I don't have to keep recreating it every time is come to the channels panel over here and then click this icon in the bottom, which says, uh, you know, if you hold over the icon, save selection as channel. So I'll save that, I'll click that and you can see we've got this alpha one channel appear now. And if I double click that, it's going to show us what the uh, selection or what the channel looks like. I'm just going to rename it to uh, tree one. And just here we can see where that first selection went off and went a bit random. Um, we've got this funny line, so I'll just remove that simply by choosing the brush tool. So over here or B on the keyboard. And I'm just literally going to paint black into this channel here. So 100% opacity. And I'm just going to basically rub that out. So I need to press Command or Control D to deselect first. And then I can just remove this funny line. Okay, so that's the first tree done. And now I'll just quickly run through and do the second and third tree just to show you exactly um, you know, the, the meat and bones of uh, what I want to show you here. So just a real quick selection I'm doing and I'll just refine that a little bit. Again, you're going to want to do this a bit more accurately yourself. And I'll just use the. Uh, I'll just select the trunks at the moment. I'm not going to select the uh, the uh, the leaves or the branches. Um, okay, so I'll come over into channels, and now I can do the same thing. Click the save selection as channel, and now I can double click that and call it tree two. 
and deselect and now I can do tree three again just a really quick job here just to kind of you know get the point across okay all right so that's good enough let's go to channels save that and rename it to tree three okay I won't do the rest but uh, you know this first three trees will be enough to get the point across so you know now what we can do the uh, the second stage here is to basically combine these three trees into one channel uh, and the reason why that is good will become apparent in just a minute so first the way to do that is to first select the uh, the first tree so command or control on the keyboard and then click to load that first selection as a channel and then with command and shift or that's on a Mac or control shift held in on the keyboard click tree 2 and then again with those same keys on the keyboard pressed in uh, click tree 3 and so what we're doing here is adding each tree to the active selection and now finally we can click this icon here to save this current selection as a channel again and now we have this one with all three trees so let's call this all trees so with that done we can I mean we can get rid of tree one two and three if we want so I'll just select those and drag them down to the bin so let's show a couple of quick examples on how you might want to use this so let's uh, command or control click to now load this all trees channel as a selection come back over into our layers uh, panel and let's add a curves adjustment so now because I had that selection active it has automatically um, been added to the layer mask of this curves channel uh, of, sorry of this uh, this curves adjustment layer so what this means is that I can now make adjustments here and it's only going to affect the uh, yeah, the channel or the selection based on that channel that contained all the trees so we can you know we can darken the trees we can brighten them if we want and nothing else is being affected of course we can uh, do the inverse of that so let's let's say for example we wanted to brighten these trees and now we want to create another adjustment so let's command click on the all trees back over here let's add another curves adjustment uh, this time I'm going to invert the uh, the layer mask here so command or control I and now because that layer mask has been inverted what's going to happen if I adjust this is going to adjust everything in the image except for those trees so this is a re really extreme example here we wouldn't want to make it look this obviously edited but again just to get the point across of uh, you know the kind of things you can do uh, I think this uh, you know this demonstration hopefully does that for you so you know you, you know, in, a, in a shot like this where you've got certain um, certain objects that you're going to want to select and process independently of the rest of the shot you know right at the start of your workflow you can do this you can just set up those selections and create that channel right at the beginning and you know that will, that will kind of set you up to make everything else a lot quicker and more convenient now like I said at the start of the video the uh, the, the actual method of selecting these trees that I used uh, just using the quick selection tool that's quite a rudimentary uh, way of creating these selections oftentimes you'll want to use something a lot more accurate and you know, a lot more precise so you know really just take the uh, the idea of what I've shown you here about combining the selections that you've created and apply that to you know the most appropriate method of creating those selections um, you know depending on the image now speaking of selections and creating selections and masks um, if you'd like to get started with using luminosity masking in your workflow then I've got a PDF that you can download which uh, contains instructions on how to create your first luminosity mask 
So if you're interested in that and you want to see what that's all about and how it can help you process your images, then just click the link below this video now. So if you're watching on YouTube, there'll be a link just in the description. Or if you're watching on the blog, there should be a button immediately below this video that you can click to go and download the, uh, the PDF. So uh, yeah, give that a shot and let me know how you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.